All right, what's going on guys? Try back again. Here to bring you another video. This video is going to be doing my character spotlight for none other than The Walking Dead's very own Merle Dixon. All right, so I've done character spotlights for quite a few characters in The Walking Dead, and this one's not going to be much different, but uh, I will say that if anybody has not seen The Walking Dead up to current point in time, so up to the season finale of season three, then, you know, I don't want to be the one to spoil, you know, the whole episode, uh, The Sorrowful Life, episode 15 of season three for you. Um, so you're going to want to click off this now. Don't watch this if you haven't heard already what, uh, what happens with, with Merle. Um, so obviously a good time for me to do a character spotlight since uh, Merle has left. Merle has left the building. Uh, Michael Rooker no longer going to be in the show unless, of course, he plays some kind of hallucination to Daryl, which we did see him do in Season 2, his only appearance in Season 2. Um, and I could see them maybe doing that a little bit, maybe doing some you know hallucinations for Daryl in the future because they have done it before and Michael Rooker seems to be interested to, to come back and help out in the show. Um, because really, if you think about Merle's character, after the first season, they really could have just, you know, forgotten all about Merle and, and never brought him back. I think it was really good writing, really intelligent that they waited a while before actually reintroducing him into the series. So he's not actually in season two at all, aside from the hallucination. Uh, and then finally, when season three, you know, kicks off, he comes back and we find out that all this time he's been with this new group in Woodbury with the governor and sort of is his number two guy, so to speak. I don't know where him and Martinez would be, but I'm pretty sure earlier on in the season he was kind of ordering Martinez around. So I would say he's probably the governor's number two at that point or the muscle gets the dirty jobs done, as the governor says. But I still th I think, too, at the same time, not only would he do that, he also... Uh, could probably run his own group and, and always seem to want to. You know, he's very rebellious against anybody telling him what to do. You know, like he says to Daryl, do you possess a pair of balls, little brother? You know, he just all kinds of great lines throughout the series. Calls Andrea sugar tits. <laughs> awesome. Uh, but I'd have to say my favorite line in, in the whole series is when um, when, when Daryl tells him that, uh, that Glenn is Korean. And uh, he's just like, whatever, like <laughs> as if it like has no difference, like no, like the meaning is no different to Merle. Uh, you know, it, it's completely the same, like whatever, like it doesn't even matter and he doesn't care. Uh, obviously a racist, you know, we knew that from the get-go, from the very beginning. Um, a very interesting character overall. So in the beginning, of course, we meet him. He starts out as a complete villain, I would say, pretty much right off the bat as soon as we meet him. You know, he's... He's acting stupid. He's shooting when there's walkers in the city and drawing attention. He's being an idiot to T-Dog. And then Rick comes in and, you know, the new guy in town, uh, Officer Friendly, and, and, you know, kind of puts him down and, and lets him know where, where he stands and that Rick can actually take him if need be. Um, and, you know, the whole thing with him losing his hand on the rooftop, kind of good now that after all that time we got to find out about that. Because in Season 2, a lot of people I remember online in the forums and, and on YouTube too in comments and stuff, people would always, you know, question like, you know, what happened to Merle after season one? Where is he? What, what's going on with him? He got away, obviously. Um, you know, he survived, but where did he go? What happened? Did he steal the truck, you know, or the van that they were in and all these different types of things? Come to find out in season three, based on what they're saying, that the governor's group actually did come across him and the governor, they did save him. Now, we don't know too much too many details about that. I'd love to see a flashback in an episode, even if it's next season, season four. I would love to see uh, AMC do like before the credits open, Merle, you know, Michael Rooker on that rooftop, you know, and have the governor come in and rescue him or something like that. I just think that would be absolutely brilliant. Uh, will they do it? I don't know, because it would cost a bit in terms of budget to, to get back into that uh, shooting location on the roof and all those things. Because um, it's got to be expensive to shoot in a city versus in the woods somewhere or a small town. It's just going to be more expensive. But uh, if they could manage it, I would love, definitely love to see what happened exactly. When, uh, you know, was the governor the one who found him himself? Was it one of his men? What happened? Why did they decide to save him? 
You know, did they were they smaller at that point? Did they not have the numbers and they were trying to add to their group so that they could be tougher? Did they kill the Vatos? You know, what happened with all those different things? Or was it another group? My understanding of that is it's probably just some other random group because there are lots of groups of survivors. It's not just them. You know, we've come across Tyrese's group, the governor's group. You got Rick's group. You know, there's lots of different survivors out there. So we can't blame everything on the governor's group unless they specifically state. Also, it's never been confirmed whether or not Randall, uh, Dave and Tony were part of the governor's group or not. Um, but regardless, you know, Merle, great character, leaving the show, them going back for him, not finding him, Daryl being heartbroken with the whole hand thing. The, yeah, Merle, yeah. You know, it was great, great act by Norman Reedus. I liked it. And then he disappears. So then we forget almost all about him by the time halfway season three comes along. And uh, season two comes along. I don't think I said season three there, but uh, then of course Chupacabra he comes back as a hallucination to Daryl, and um, you know we're wondering like is it is it really him? Is not? And then you see the hand, you're like oh okay he's just hallucinating, right? So that was a great scene. I like that. And then coming into season three, so coming into season three, one of the things I was most excited for, a lot of us were questioning, is Merle the governor? Of course we find out he's not. But um, even better, because then he can add to the story more, and he can kind of go in between the groups back and forth, which I thought was really, really you know, exciting, because he starts off, and he's completely loyal to the governor, to the point where he'll do anything. You know, when he, um, you know, he's going after uh, Michonne, really, really exciting stuff when him and Michonne are going at it. The go back on the ground, love that. Him killing the other guy, like, he's just... Just brutal, man. Just he, he is a villain, you know. Uh, even in Zombie Apocalypse, he is brutal. He is definitely a villain. So here's where he makes a decision that sort of, you know, um, makes him and the governor, you know, part ways, so to speak. He decides that Michonne is too dangerous. The situation is becoming too dangerous. So he goes back. He decides to kill that uh, surviving kid that's with him and go back to Woodbury, or not, not necessarily go back, but you know, essentially, you know, kills him so he doesn't know what's going on. Seems to go back, continues to track Michonne, but then as soon as he runs into Glenn and Maggie, decides to go back again. So he just, he kind of, I think he, he recognizes and he respects how much of a threat and how dangerous Michonne is with her sword and everything, and what she's able to do to the four of them that are tracking her. And um, as soon as he can find a way to go back, he, he does so. Uh, Glenn and Maggie, of course, come out, and he does what I imagine the governor has pretty much set as a procedure, which is to capture whoever he finds or whatever he can do and bring people back to find their group, to, to do whatever they have to do uh, as part of the governor's group, to steal their supplies, to steal their food, to do all these things. Definitely an evil group overall. The, the structure of the group, the way they survive in the zombie apocalypse, very evil to those who are not a part of that group. Uh, and Merle does well there. I mean, he he fits in that group perfectly because he has no problem getting the dirty jobs done. You know, he's kind of one of those guys that you can't really trust him, and he kind of he kind of walks his own path. But at the same time, he uh, he has no problem with sort of going in between the lines. You know, he'll he'll do things that are that are evil, like killing that kid when he was going after Michonne, doing all these types of uh, types of things that he does. Uh, also, um, based on what he said. Uh, and the count that I had at the end of the uh, last episode, he's killed 22, 23, or somewhere between 22 and 24 people. 20. Wow, man. So he might have the highest uh, number of kills of survivors of anybody we've seen in The Walking Dead. You know, uh, definitely the TV series. The comic book series, there may be characters that have more kills. Negan may have more kills. I imagine he probably would at that time. Uh, the governor probably has more kills, maybe. Uh, hard to say in, in the comic book series, not the TV series. But Merle, by himself, taking down 22 to 24 people. It's just crazy. I mean, the amount. It's crazy. Uh, and, you know, again, relating it back, you know, he does become an anti-hero as this goes through, but he's still very much a villain at the same time. He's really only on the viewer's side because of Daryl. You know, he's really only there because of Daryl. With, with, without Daryl, he's not, he's not really, you know, he is still very much a villain. So then, of course, you know, he meets up with Daryl. The governor turns on him. And he decides to uh, switch sides completely and uh, is no longer loyal to the governor and almost feels betrayed by the governor for what the governor was about to do to him before Rick 
rescues him and his brother. Uh, some really interesting scenes with him and Daryl. Uh, it'll be interesting to see if they actually threw down who would win because Daryl's so tough and such a badass. I would almost say that Merle would. You know, as badass as Daryl is, it's like his older brother's even more badass. He's one of the most badass characters we've seen in all The Walking Dead. One of the toughest characters in all The Walking Dead. By himself, one-on-one, -on -one, bar none, he could give anybody a good go for their money. I think he could beat almost anybody, with the exception of maybe Rick one-on-one, -on -one, Morgan one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, the Governor, that'd be a good matchup. Maybe I should do a video matchup for that one. The Governor versus Merle one-on-one, -on -one, who would win? Because I think it's a different situation. Um, everything that, that comes about, and then, of course, a lot of his lines, you know, Herschel calling him the black sheep when he was at the prison. Uh, a lot of things he says, just the Michael Rooker, amazing actor, just really delivering uh, a stellar performance just chilling some of the lines he has at the prison where he's in the cell and everything and he's telling uh, he's telling rick that he's cold damn officer friendly you're cold as ice you know with the whole uh you know what the governor's going to do to her thing man crazy so then the final episode this sorrowful life i loved it i thought it was great it was the perfect ending episode for merle as a character for the series is it the right time for them to kill him i think it is because he was there in season one. He's gone. He comes back for season three. Let's have him be the ma a mainstay A-list character for season three, and then that's it for him. You know, that's his time in the show, whatever. Good. Let's not let him fall into the background, into obscurity. Merle is one of those characters he can't really fall into the background. He's too, you know, uh, he's just, he's, he's too rebellious. He's too hot-headed. He's too, he's got to be doing something. He's sitting there at the prison for a little while and everybody looks at him like he's the devil and they hate him. As soon as he finds something he could do, boom, he doesn't waste even one second. He's going after it. He's doing the best he can, uh, you know, for what he thinks needs to be done, doing what he thinks needs to be done because he's just looking for something to do. So you can't have him just be a background character there and not in the forefront. Merle's a character that's going to force himself to be in the forefront no matter what. So I think you kind of have to take him out. It would be interesting to see him in the group for a longer period of time, but I don't think it would work. Either Glenn would probably try to kill him or Michonne would or some, you know, something would happen and next thing you know, somebody would kill him or something would happen. He would just have to leave. It just wouldn't work out probably. However, for a send-off, man, that episode, The Sorrowful Life, episode 15, season 3, amazing for Merle. Merle fans, you know, I can see why a lot of people are like, Merle's one of my favorite characters. Because in this episode, he just, he had an amazing send-off, man. He goes in by himself, brings a herd of walkers with him, and a lowrider, drinking whiskey, a <laughs> 26 or a whiskey, you know, on the way. Um, he's, uh, you know, steals the car, you know, <laughs> hot wires it. You know, he's got some good zombie kills in the mix while he's doing it. He even lets Michonne go because he can't do it. You know, even though he's, he's, you know, he still can't, he knows what the governor's going to do to her. He can't quite do it. So he wants to make things right in the only way he knows how to go out like a G, blazing fashion, coming in, almost killing the governor so close, taking out so many of his men. I counted at least six, maybe seven. Um, shooting Ben in the crosshairs. Yes, I know now it was, it was Ben in the crosshairs, not the governor, but like that close. Really exciting. Really creative to use the lowrider to have the walkers follow him in, bringing his own little army in by himself. Definitely got balls, man. Because if you think about it, how many other characters in The Walking Dead have we seen that had balls like that? I don't know. I don't know if we've seen any. Shane didn't have balls like that. No way, man. Going by himself, one-handed, you know, against like, what was it, 8, 9, 10? 10, 10 men with all with high-powered, you know, shotguns and rifles and all kinds of stuff. So Merle went out like a G, man. An absolute G. It was a perfect ending for him. Then, of course, Daryl. Very sad scene at the end when Daryl has to put him down. Very touching, but very sad. I like how he's, you know, they, they did it where he's pushing him off, pushing him off, pushing him off, and then he's just, he's just, you know, it's, oh, man, brutal. It was, it was a great ending for Moreau as a character. Definitely, for me, one of my favorite characters of the Walking Dead series, too. He was a loose cannon. He was tough as nails, hot-headed, fan favorite, rebellious. Um, let's see, what else? I mean, so resourceful, hot wiring cars and doing all these things. Like, like he could get it done, man. He could do things in a zombie apocalypse that other characters wouldn't even have a chance doing. He can just, he just figures out, you know, just on the road, finds a, a ride just like that. He's just so resourceful, man. Just so resourceful. And, um, you know, ends up in the end being a perfect antihero and redeeming himself. 
by you know going at it all by himself and making things right or doing the best as best he could to make things right anyway <coughs> that's about all I gotta say about Merle fantastic character uh, rightful older brother to Daryl and uh, that's it for this video guys I'll see you for the next one this is Trev and I'm saying peace